I'm Heather Widows and I'm a professor in the philosophy department and for the last decade or so I've been working on beauty from a philosophical perspective. Before I worked on beauty I spent 20 years working on global ethics and it gradually became clear to me that what's dominating young people's lives and making their lives go better or worse is how they look. Beauty is just as much an issue of justice as any other issues. So now for the first time we have a global beauty ideal. So understanding the moral nature of that the way that, that it profoundly impacts on your sense of self, that body image anxiety is now devastating of who you are, is a really fundamental change in what we think human beings are and in how we judge ourselves and others. And only understanding the moral and ethical tone, which is the bit as a philosopher that I bring to the party, can we understand how our way of valuing each other and ourselves has changed dramatically. My research matters because lookism is a neglected and fundamental form of discrimination. Appearance bullying is the most prevalent form of bullying in schools and yet it's the one we do least about. It's not a protected characteristic but it's incredibly important that we recognise both lookism and seek to address it. Only if we name it and see it can we address it and part of what philosophy does is name things. So part of why lookism is so devastating is because it's shame of the self. So I've worked with the Anti-Bullying Alliance, for instance, and we've produced the first training for teachers in schools around appearance discrimination. We no longer value our health over our appearance. We value our appearance over our health and over our intellect. So it's so important that we start recognising this in schools, in the workplace, at every level. Otherwise, we are not protecting our children or ourselves. So how do we start to address the harms of beauty? So lots of things that have been tried, things like body positivity or digital literacy campaigns in schools, right? these don't work. Body positivity, in fact, makes you feel like you've got the wrong attitudes. So you already feel bad that your body looks wrong, and then you feel like, oh no, I'm supposed to love my body. Oh no, I failed at that too. So the Everyday Lookism campaign was something that doesn't use images, it uses words, which of course means it does less well on social media, but we felt we had to use words. And what it does is it tells luckist stories. We thought people would rush to share their luckiest stories on social media. And surprise, surprise, they didn't. And they didn't because luckism still feels shameful. So we shifted it from a social media campaign to an online website where people can be anonymous. And already the stories are powerful and they've had quite a lot of media pickup because you can see from the stories how shameful it is that little comment that is made that's seen as jest or banter hurts. People remember it for decades, but because who we are has become how we look, when you make that nasty comment about somebody's body, you are actually making a nasty comment about themselves.